Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 22 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering a few new things with fgets and how to fix some of its flaws. And this is going to take a whole tutorial because it's kind of hard to explain. So, um, it, but it involves a lot to do, or has a lot to do with the text strings that we talked about in the last tutorial. So, um, this program is the exact same as the last program that we had from the previous tutorial, because like I said, this is going to be like a two-part uh, sort of thing. So this is the exact same program that we've had, we had in the last tutorial. The only difference is that I've changed my max to 50, which means that our array now has a total of 50 elements, and um, which means that we can have 49 characters, and then we have one extra byte to hold the null character at the end. So um, let's go ahead and build and run this just to reiterate how this program worked. And as you can see, when we go ahead and build and run this, um, it works as expected. The whole name that we entered here is returned, and um, that's what happens. So that's one advantage from for fgets over scanf was that um, we could return uh, things more than one word long, basically, because scanf, as soon as it saw white space, it was done. So anyway, um, that's the advantage of fgets over scanf, or one of them. So anyway, um, let's say, for example, we put a period after this. And this is getting to the downfalls of fgets, because unfortunately all functions seem to have their problems somewhere, and fgets F gets problems lie here. So when we go ahead and build and run this, and we're going to do the same thing, enter my name, and when I do this, as you can see, the period is entered on the next line, but that doesn't really make any sense because right here, we never put any backslash n, we just put the period right after the name. So we expected that the period would be right here, but it doesn't. And why is that? Because when we F gets takes every white space character, which includes spaces, tabs, and even returns. I know the return ends the, the F gets, but it is also stored inside of the array. So right after the H character is entered, the return is also put into a byte in memory, and then the, the, the null character is added on after that. So how that looks in our example little graphic here is if I entered my first name, L-U-C-A-S, the return would go in this fifth element here, and then the, um, the, the, sorry, the null character would go in right after that. So for our example here, the return key would be right here, and then all of the other characters would be here. But what's happening is when we reprint this out, that return key is also being printed out, and since printing out a return means that it's going down to the next line, the period ends up down here, and so would all other text that we print out. So how do we fix that? How can we get it so that the return key isn't in the array? And there is a way of doing that, of course, or else this tutorial would not exist. So um, how we're going to get this to work is we're going to find the total length of the array. So with the return, um, finding the length will find everything that's in the array. So that includes characters, white space characters, which is which are the space tab and even the return key. So in our example, lucas would be in the string length plus the return key. So with my name plus the return key, that's a total of six characters long. So the string length will be six. So um, this function, stringlen, is included in a header file called string.h. And it's right here. And so that's how we need this pound include to bring in this header file to use our stringlen function. So to store the length of our array, we're going to use an integer, and we're just going to call it length. And just to initialize it, we're going to give it a value of zero, but that's going to change, obviously. So right after our f gets, we want to assign the value or the length of our array that we just entered. So length is going to get the new and 
the function that we have to use is string len. And as you can see from our uh, magical auto input thing here, um, it's a pointer variable, which means we have to point to, for an array, we have to point to the zeroth element in the array. And our shortcut for doing that is just entering the name like that. And again, we it's pointing, it's the address of the zeroth element. So that's uh, the pointer for string len, point to the zeroth element in the array, and that's where it's going to start counting for uh, the characters that we have, or the characters that are in our array. So length is going to get whatever string len returns. And to demonstrate what it does return, we're going to make, a, make another printf, and we're going to throw in a integer, because that's what our length is, it's an integer, and we're just going to put in length. So now this func or this program is going to show you the length of the array, or the what we enter. So let's go ahead and build and run this, enter my name, or no, let's just enter my first name. So we delete everything, okay, I just screwed that up. Let's build and run that again. Just enter my first name, hit return, and as you can see, our length is returned as 6. And what that means is it's including all these these five characters, and then the return key is included in the length of the string. So um, what that means is we have to delete whatever this character is here. So in terms of our in terms of arrays, this L is the zeroth element. So the zeroth element, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the return key would fall on the fifth element of the array. So that means we have to get rid of that fifth element in the array, and we need to replace it with a zero value, or a null character, so that it that signifies the array is done. So how are we going to do this? Well, if, if the length of our array is 6, then we can just subtract 1, and that will land on the that will equal 5, which we can replace the fifth element in the array, which is our return, and we can return that, or we can change that value to a zero. So now, right after our length, we can say my array, and again, we can use our square brackets to point to any element in the array. So the zeroth element is the first element technically, but it's the zeroth element, which is our L in this case. So what we're going to use is length, which would be 6 in our case here, but we want to get 5, so we just subtract 1 from that, and that will be our, uh, that will be the fifth, the fifth element in the array, which is our return key. So we are going to replace that with a zero, uh, 0 value. So now let's go ahead and build and run this again, and actually, no, let's not build and run this again. Let's change our printf now, and, okay, I have no idea why I just did that. Let's change our printf to um, welcome, and then our, our string again, and we're going to put my array in there to show how the array works now. And of course, we got to put our period in to demonstrate the example. So build and run, enter my name, and when you, as you can see, when we hit return, now the period is put at the end. And to explain one more time how this happened. The length of the array before was six characters, five for the characters, and one for the return key. So what we did was we just said five, or sorry, six minus one is five. So the fifth element in the array, where the return is located, will now get a value of zero, which will terminate the string. And now we don't have the return key inside of the array anymore, so we can freely print out the zero. So that's the tutorial on fgets, and there's going to be, of course, more tutorials to come. If you have any questions on this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments or send me a message, and please check out the channel and post any of your um, suggestions for the channel into the moderator thing that I have set up. Alright, more tutorials are on the way. Uh, check back soon. Alright, see ya.